and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come and praise your maker. Come, all, come you, all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come, 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 all you people. Come and praise your maker. Come and praise your maker. Good morning. Now we're going to pray together and it would be really good if you could help me this morning. So I'm going to read out each line of our prayer and after each line, maybe you could say with me, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. Okay? So it's, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. Ready? Let's pray together. When I'm a bit confused with things changing all the time, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. When I find things hard to understand, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. When I'm worried about my family or my friends, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. When my friends forget to be kind and make me sad, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. When I feel scared or hurt or upset, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. When I feel bullied or unhappy, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. When I go back to school or nursery and I'm happy to be back and to see all my friends, but I do miss my family after being with them for all this time, I give it to Jesus, he answers my prayers. Now will you help me to say the words that Jesus taught us? Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we've been thinking about you all this week because we know it was a really exciting week because lots of you went back to school and back to nursery and we hope that went really well and we'll be thinking about you next week as you go back full time and you're there all week. So just know that we're thinking about you and we hope you have lots of fun. And now we're going to have a look at your special photographs and then after that we are going to enjoy a wee cartoon all about the lost sheep. <laughs>
us pray. Lord God, as we come before you now, we open our hearts to you. Help us to see that we can learn so much from others, even from those with whom we think we may not share much in common. Make us willing to stand out from the crowd, to hear your voice and to act upon it. Lord, sometimes we look as though we are listening to others. We may even make all the right noises. But we confess that our attention is often anywhere but where it's supposed to be. Forgive us, Lord, for missed opportunities. Sometimes we are too distracted by our own concerns. We care only for ourselves and listen only to those who say what we want to hear. Forgive us, Lord, for missed opportunities. Sometimes we don't listen to people because we don't like them or because they are different from us. Sometimes we have bad or unhelpful thoughts. Forgive us, Lord, for missed opportunities. Sometimes we don't listen to you, Lord, because we are too busy or a bit frightened about what you might say to us. Forgive us, Lord, for missed opportunities. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 56, and we'll read verse, verse 1, and this, then verses 6 to 8. The Lord says to his people, Do what is just and right, for soon I will save you. And the Lord says to those foreigners who become part of his people, who love him and serve him, who observe the Sabbath and faithfully keep his covenant. I will bring you to Zion, my sacred hill, give you joy in my house of prayer, and accept the sacrifices you offer on my altar. My temple will be called a house of prayer for the people of all nations. The Sovereign Lord who has brought his people Israel home from exile, has promised that he will bring still other people to join them. Amen. Please now join me in prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our loving Father, with humble hearts we give thanks for the gift of life, for your protection around us, your guiding hand upon us, and your sustaining love within us. The Canaanite woman saw your help. She was so full of love. She was so desperately in need that she wouldn't give up till she had her answer. We pray in faith, hear us and answer our cry, loving God. Lord, may we learn from this woman to wait on you expectantly, patiently, persistently, Grant us the courage of our convictions when we truly believe that we are doing your will. We pray for those who feel heartbroken at the loss of a loved one, for all those affected by the Stonehaven rail incident, for those who question their own worth, for those who are alone. Lord, embrace them in your love, surround them with your care, and support them with your strength. We pray in faith, hear us and answer our cry, loving God. We pray for those who are sick and suffering, for those for whom life is a constant struggle. Touch them with your healing hands and, and hold them in your care. We pray for those who work to bring help, wholeness, dignity and healing to the sick. Loving God, grant to them your wisdom and guidance. We pray for those who are anxious, worried and unsure of what the future holds. For our young people, their teachers and support staff as schools return in unfamiliar circumstances. Be with them, Lord, to assure them of your love, that they may trust in your plan for their lives. We pray in faith, hear us and answer our cry, 
loving God. And all these prayers we offer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, and the passage is entitled, A Woman's Faith. Listen for the word of God. Jesus left that place and went off to the territory near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman who lived in that region came to him. Son of David, she cried out. Have mercy on me, sir. My daughter has a demon and is in a terrible condition. But Jesus did not say a word to her. His disciples came to him and begged him, send her away. She is following us and making all this noise. Then Jesus replied, I have been sent only to the lost sheep of the people of Israel. At this the woman came and fell at his feet. Help me, sir, she said. Jesus answered, it isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's true, sir, she answered, but even the dogs eat the leftovers that fall from their master's table. So Jesus answered her, you are a woman of great faith. What you want will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was healed. Amen. And thanks to God for this reading from his holy word.
What would you do if you had a message to share and no one was listening? Well, one man decided that to get his message across, he would walk 700 miles. 700 miles from Land's End all the way to the city of Edinburgh and to the castle gates itself. With a big message, a big message on his back, in his rucksack, to get people to listen and to help. His name was Major Chris Brannigan and he raised more than £400,000 for research into a rare genetic condition that his daughter suffers from. But the amazing thing is that he chose to walk those 700 miles every step of the way barefoot. At times he had to travel on all fours. At other times he used crutches as the miles would take their toll on his poor feet. But Major Chris Brannigan was determined, determined to finish it. And he did that last week. And it was a sight to behold in the media to see his young daughter greet him at Edinburgh Castle Gates. Have a wee look at a bit of his journey now. So here I am in Land's End, in the southwest of England, about to take my very first steps on a 700 mile barefoot march. Challenging, so painful. Oh. Watch out carefully, I step onto the gravel path here. No problem, thank you so much. Oh. One man with a message to share. One man on a mission to help his daughter and to help others. Our gospel reading was about a woman on a mission to help her sick daughter. She was a woman who wouldn't allow Jesus to ignore her, a woman who simply wouldn't take no for an answer. In a moment we're going to hear about her argument with Jesus. Meantime, here's your chance to sing along to the final two verses of the hymn Let us build a house where love can dwell. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger. Let the image of God's face 
Last week there would be many a tear shed by parents as their wee ones started school or nursery for the very first time. It's one of those big days in life, a milestone day, a day we remember possibly for the rest of our lives because it's a day of new beginnings, a day when the future stretches out ahead of us, a day when we begin that journey of learning. Our gospel story today is about a woman whose persistence paid off. It's a story about a new beginning for that Canaanite woman as she encountered Jesus and wouldn't let up until her daughter was healed. This was a mother on a mission, prepared to do anything for her daughter. She began by shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me, sir. She unashamedly appealed to Jesus' compassion. But it didn't work. Jesus chose to ignore her. But she wasn't given up, so she followed him and continued to shout at him. Finally, Jesus turned on her and said, Look, I'm here only for the lost sheep of the people of Israel. Still, she wasn't giving up. So she fell at his feet and pleaded with him, Help me, sir. Then, instead of the compassion that we might expect, there comes an insult and an argument. When Jesus says, It isn't right to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But this was a mother fighting for her daughter. So she stood her ground and argued with him. Even the dogs get the leftovers from their master's table. The story finishes with Jesus praising her for her faith and finally healing her daughter. So what's going on here? And why did the early church include this story in the Gospels? A story that shows Jesus at best insensitive and at worst harsh and cruel. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think this was Jesus learning on the job. This is the point in his life, the light bulb moment, when he sees that actually God's love is for all, including that woman and her daughter. Here Jesus embraces Isaiah's understanding of God when he said, my temple will be called a house of prayer for people of all nations. That moment was a new beginning for Jesus, as the attitudes and, yes, the prejudices that he grew up with were changed and transformed in that powerful encounter. A new beginning as it dawned on him that God's love was for all and not a select few. 
And a new beginning is what Jesus offers to us. Whether we are an outsider or an insider or somebody right in the middle, a new beginning, not just today, but every new day. Amen. for four years so I know it by heart uh, and it saddens me to see all the destruction and devastation here. Um, what we are doing here is that uh, since day one we set up a tent here and uh, we, we brought some volunteers with us and others were coming just to volunteer on the spot.
It was devastating the first day after the explosion when we came. We saw hundreds of uh, uh, the locals uh, just uh, dragging their suitcases. The, de the devastation is uh, huge, so in uh, the coming weeks and months we will be working uh, closely with the uh, locals here to help them rebuild their life. So every uh, donation counts and we, I sincerely want to thank everyone who showed the solidarity and with the affected population.